button, even though it's going to go out in three minutes. Look at that. We beat the system, baby. Okay. We, we beat the system. All right. And feed is coming through. And you're on. Hi, you guys. Ginger Cook uh, here uh, with uh, Curly Painting Storytime. And <laughs> today I'm going to be painting a scene from a Tuscany on a 6x8 canvas. This is not a tutorial, you guys. This is part of a, this is a commissioned piece of artwork that I have to paint anyway. And so I've just invited you into my studio to be a fly on the wall, so to speak. <clears throat> and I'll entertain you with uh, stories from my travels and youth, which has been, as what people tells me, is not the norm. <laughs> Most people didn't have childhoods like this. You know, when it's your child, you, you figure it's pretty normal. But frankly, when it's other people going, you all did what? What happened here, right? So I'm, as I'm painting along, um, I thought the theme for today would be the first time I went, uh, you know, took a cruise. And when I was 14 years old, um, my parents somehow got, thought it would be nice if my sister and I, who was six, then 14, 15, 16, almost 17, would, uh, we would be gone for the summer, almost two months. And um, this was great. It was, uh, and they thought we should see Europe. They had been to Europe. My adoptive father was a judge on the Nuremberg trials. And so, um, uh, you know, that was the one thing mother thought people should see is Europe. And then um, she wasn't big on, you know, other stuff, but Hawaii, Hawaii and Europe were her favorite places, even though they only went the one time. So anyhow, so she, we had this, uh, we flew from, San Diego, all of us from San Di from, well, I guess, Seattle to San Francisco, where we picked up a P&O ship. Um, and uh, from there, we uh, we were on. We went down through. We went through the Panama Canal, and um, and then ended up in um, in England. But what was interesting it was a month. It was a month cruise, thirty day cruise, and then once we got to, um, uh, once we got to the UK, then we started our tour. We did. Uh, we didn't go to Ireland, but we did. Do, we did a tour on the, you know, the UK, and then we did. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, then then we crossed the channel. I think we how did we get across the channel. We, we, then we, when we got to Europe, we picked up a, a Mercedes uh, Volkswagen bus with no air. Okay, no wait, wait, wait. Mercedes does not make a Volkswagen bus. Do you have a Mercedes <laughs> bus or do you have a Volkswagen bus? Well, it was a Volkswagen kind of bus, but it was by Mercedes. Then it would be a Mercedes van. Yeah, it was, <laughs> yeah. It was like that, though, like what I would, you know. And it well, you were 14. How do you know these things? Well, right? I know anything about it. Just <laughs> the other, the bigger kids on the, on the tour all, all thought that... Um, that you know, they were all keen that we were on a Mercedes until we discovered it had no air conditioning, and um, everybody fought to, to to sit by the window, back window when the back windows opened, and it was summer, you know. So anyhow, but uh, and we wound our way. We went to all these different countries in Europe, and then we ended up. We did go to Italy. And, uh, and that's what I'm going to talk about, you know, and we'll get into that, our, our trip to Italy and, um, and seeing Pompeii and, you know, the catacombs in Rome and visiting the Vatican and, um, uh, you know, we toured the Swiss Alps, uh, Bavaria, Germany. Uh, let's see, we didn't get to Holland or at, at those northern countries. We didn't get, we, Germany and Austria were the farthest that we went, okay? But that was our, um, that was the tour. And so there was a month on the ship and a month on, and, and, and the bus. And so there were, the bus held like, it was full. There was like, there was like 12 kids. 14 being the youngest, me, and the oldest were around 17, 18, okay, older kids. And then the, the, uh, the couple that, uh, they didn't put the tour on, but they were like the chaperones of the tour. Um, 
they um, um, they had their daughter with them, and apparently they got the trip for free uh, for uh, you know watching everybody else. This kid, okay? So so we ended up so we were in second class on the ship. Um, you know, which, 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 which I, you know, I thought this was. But listen, I loved every minute of this tour. This was we had. This was really big time fun, you guys. Big time fun. There were some perils and things like that, but, you know, um, my sister and I shared a room. And um, uh, we had, I think we had bunk beds. And uh, I think the bathroom on our ship, because it was first, you know. Back, back in what, what, what was the year, John? We decided the year was. Nineteen sixty-one. Sixty-one. Yeah. Okay. You said you were fourteen. I was. So I said, yeah. Well, you were. Yeah, that's it's sixty-one. I was married in sixty-five, at eighteen. So. Yeah, that'd be four more years. Okay. All right. So, anyhow, anyhow, dear friends. Uh, so. You know, and I think, in all fairness, my adopted parents were excited for us to have the opportunity to go. You know what I mean? And it was quite an opportunity, that trip like that. Somebody told me, a kid, like that somebody was going to get to do that. It would be fun. And, um, and I have to tell you, I was uh, really looking forward to it. And my sister was, too. And, and we, we really had a good time. The, some of you may he may have heard the story about my the waiter that waited on our table in the dining room. His name was Alice. I still remember. John and I have done hundreds, you know, at least a hundred cruises now, and I couldn't tell you the name of anybody that waited on us. Really, honestly, could you, John? No. No, but I remembered Alice. You know, at fourteen, he made an impression on me that. Um, it still sticks today. That this. Oh my gosh, does it ever? You know, because um, <laughs> to be. Uh, well, in the first place, he he wore blue eyeshadow. Which is you know, very common. And, you know, apparently. back in when I was in grade school, my teacher, uh, Mr. Lamson, see, you remember the names of the people that <laughs> that really scarred you, right? Um, he, he was a he wore pink pants to school, and you know, and he wasn't. Um, he was an artist and pink wool pants. And back when, you know, in the 50s, nobody did that. You know what I mean? Nobody wore uh, pink pants to school. And he did. So Alice was just took it a step further with the blue eye, eye shadow and the name Alice. And there was a British, p &O is a British company. And back, back then, you know, cruises just changed a lot over the years. When my daughter Cinnamon and my sister and I went on a cruise, this was before she was uh, married to John, but they were still dating. Uh, so that was back in the late, early 90s. And my sister had uh, lost a job, and I had sold some property. And so we we took a cruise, and um, that was uh, far different from what I remember on the P&O cruise, but that the cruise that my sister and Sidman and I took back then is was far different than the... Um, than the cruises that um, that we that the ships were doing today and what we what we do on so it evolves it's an evolving thing. Um, but and the British had their own deal because, um, but but and they did they had their own absolutely their own deal. So anyhow we um, we really enjoyed the sh the shipment we went through the Panama Canal which was quite an experience you know, and. Um, there weren't a lot of port stops, you know, like now, you know, everybody's stopping everywhere, okay? And I remember we, we stopped in Curacao, and, um, and uh, let's see, it's a couple of places, and it was, oh, for a month trip, I can't, I don't know why it took so long, it was a month, but we did, I don't recall all the places, if we stopped in more places, I don't, they weren't memorable to me. But we got off, I remember getting off in Panama, back when Panama was not much of a city. And I remember that. And um, so we did some different things, but that was, um, 
again, like for instance, John and I, you know, have been on cruises. We get off all every almost every day, and you see something, and and that there we didn't do that at all. Okay, so when, when, so I'm just going to skip the part about you know just that Alice was my waiter, and we've I've probably talked about Alice uh, with very fond memories before now before this, I'm sure, and and the reason for that was is that Alice was. Uh, responsible for the fact that I could, that that he would bring me food that I like to eat, and one of my favorite foods in the world was lamb chops. In fact, John and I were at Costco today, and I bought some lamb chops to have it for Christmas dinner. That's how much I like lamb chops. Okay. So uh, anyway, so Alice saw that I had lamb chops and rice every night for dinner. That's all I wanted. And he didn't care, which was great. Um, that's probably what hooked me on cruising, was this idea that um, food was always an issue at our house because I really disliked so many things. I mean, I was kind of, a, I just didn't like a lot of stuff that the other people wanted to eat, you know? And when I talk about the other people, that made my mom and my dad and my sister, and I suppose what they considered normal people, I didn't want any of that. <laughs> I just didn't like their food. Didn't want to eat it, so no. Uh, so I felt that when you could go on a cruise and they would just kind of cater to you, even if you were a kid, that was really that was that was fun, yeah. So I'll, I'll probably tell some other stories more about the time on the ship, but I think I want to bring everybody to Italy since that's what I'm painting today. So we when we got to Italy, it was the heat of the heat of the summer. And if you, if you looked at the brochure that the tour, there was a wonderful brochure. You know, you can't sell anybody a, a, anything unless you have a brochure. Wouldn't you say that's true, John? Oh, back There's got to the be with pictures and everything. Yeah, you always so say like, where's the brochure. The, so um, we had, a, you know, we had a driver and a brochure, a brochure that showed these beautiful first-class hotels that were just truly first-class. I mean, you couldn't get more first-class in the hotel business than those okay and so we drove up in these long driveways right we drove up and uh see this pal almost like a pal palatial hotel and then the the, the tour guide you know our, our chaperones get out and then they go into the lobby and they come back out and then the bus driver drives around to the back and we're in what's called the Annex, which is kind of like Motel 6 compared to the rest of this place, right? It's just such a far cry from the brochure. It's not funny. And this kept, kept happening to us every place we stopped, okay? The brochure had conned our parents and everybody said, oh, they're staying in luxury. Look at this hotel. My, you know, it's great bragging rights at cocktail parties. Look at where my kid's staying. And then um, guess what, dear friends? You're not staying there. Okay, there was no staying there. I'm gonna dry this. To be continued. Um. And I also want to mention that there is no drinking age in Europe. There's like you have to be 21 in America to drink. In Europe, you can be six and you can drink. They don't care. They can just drink. drink whatever you want. Nobody cares, apparently. That's how. That's how. So most of remember, I was the little kid in this group, right, at, at, at 14. The naive, naive, naive kid who'd um, never heard about, never heard of somebody being gay. I just, that was concept was never discussed at our house, okay? And again, I was this this little kid who um, was clueless compared to I wasn't a little I wasn't small in that I was like f five feet you know almost ten inches so I wasn't small but I was certainly young I was the youngest and the um, uh, the other kids were like really seventeen and, and there was like a, but let's see it was kind of a make makeup of I think uh, there was a boy and his sister, and then there was a, uh, uh, 
a couple of other girls and some boys. I don't know. Can't remember exactly. With, uh, I wasn't friends with any of them because I was too young. They were not friends with me. I, you know, we may have eaten at dinner together and stuff, but um, we had absolutely nothing in common. They liked my sister. I don't know that they even liked me. I was just too young for them. To you know, there was just there was no upside to you know being friendly with me. I guess. But anyway, the when we got to these hotels, they got upset, and um, they started, I know this is shocking, John, but they started to just tear the hotel room up in their anger because it didn't look like the brochure. I mean, they were really mad, you know? So um, uh, I remember them tearing the sink out of the wall in one room because we all had rooms on the same floor. They'd torn the sink out of the wall and had done some damage to the doors. And they were not nice kids, okay? I was a nice kid. Well, not really, but nicer than them. <laughs> I just, I was nicer than them, man. Um, you know, I couldn't imagine going somewhere to a place and having my parents to find out that I had torn a sink out of the wall unless it was an accident. You know what I mean? Like you, you sat on it or something and, um, then maybe it fell out of the wall and you could go whoops. But there was no whoops here. This was just pure, unadulterated destruction. Okay? There's not a whoops in the group. So, sadly, um, this is why the hotels did the annexes in the first place, because of these kind of kids. And apparently, we this was... Um, there's a true story of um, that there's some parrots in India that when they're young, they have to watch it. Cause they'll go up to the uh, uh, where people are parking their cars and they'll tell, tear the windshield wipers off the cars. It's for kind of like van, you know, vandalism. You know, they're just they're kind of uh, prone to vandalism. Okay, and I, I don't know. Maybe that's something that's a that's a um, function of the young. Um, what, what, for what, forever, whatever reason, um, we were at a lot of hot uh, annexes, and I'm sure that that just ruined uh, anybody else from ever getting to stay at that fancy hotel because they had to cover a lot of damages from these kids. I know it's kind of sad, isn't it, when you think about it? When I tell you these stories, you go, "Oh, that's too bad." Oh yeah. But uh, when we got to Italy. The first place we got to was was a just an ordinary hotel in Rome. It, it wasn't one of these fancy palatial places. It was just a hotel, and it came with dinner. Okay. So, um, and the what I remember the most thing about oh, okay. So, I, I, it, but besides being a fussy eater, one of the things I was dead against was. Um, uh, sodas and stuff. I couldn't stand anything carbonated, not even an orange drink. And you couldn't drink the water back in those days. You, you could, it was like Mexico then. You couldn't drink the water and risk not getting sick. So, so you couldn't like have water at dinner and so, um, you, you know, they had sodas which were terrible. The other kids didn't mind, but you know, it was just going ah, gasp, gasp, right? And, um, and then they had the, um, uh, let's see, then they went for every meal in Italy was the was spaghetti first. Regardless of what else you or, ordered, they had the pasta op appetizer or whatever this was, and um, we we had we had spaghetti. And I'm not saying spaghetti is a bad thing. I mean I didn't hate spaghetti. You know, there wasn't a lot to every it. Every day, every meal. Yeah, every day there's some sort of spaghetti thing that they offered, right? And like I say, I don't hate spaghetti or anything. I just, um, well, it's just, which is weird. Yeah, I got to dry this again, you guys. So I'll tell you, so tell you more about it. trips to Rome here.
now with the exception of the hotels, all right, with the exception of the hotels, the, the trip was as advertised. Everywhere we stopped, um, we, we saw, uh, you know, castles and churches and historic points, and there, was, there wasn't a place where we, we, we were that they didn't um, have some, something to see, okay? So that part was really good. And when we got to Rome, some of the things that I, I saw a lot of people on Vespas and stuff, and I remember wanting to rent a Vespa on my free day off, but you had to be even there. You could, you could drink at the age of five, but apparently if you wanted to drive one of their vehicles, you had to be a little older. <laughs> just, the nerve of them. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. Just, just so unfair, right, John? I think so. So you had to be, yes, yeah, slightly older than that to be able to drink at this stuff, right? But um, uh, anyhow, so I didn't get to rent a Vespa, but the thing I remember that, about Rome was that there was this view, there's fountains everywhere, and they were gorgeous. And, I mean, we saw all these fountains, and trivially, the three coins of fountain, you, know, you make the wish in the fountain, that one. And um, uh, that was just wonderful. And just seeing that, it was, that was really, I mean, it was really, even as a silly kid, that was pretty cool. Can okay. you go a little bit to the left? Yeah. That was pretty cool with the, um, you know, to be able to, to have that. And I will say that. And then we went, we had a tour one time, and we, we saw the, um, the catacombs. And the catacombs apparently are, are these miles of tunnels underneath Rome, and they're um, and they're uh, where they buried people, and skulls and stuff, and they buried people. And even today, if you go to Rome, you know you can take tours of the catacomb. You you won't see a lot of it, but you'll see some. You know, there's so much to see, right? Does that make sense? There's just so much to see that you won't see a lot. But there's these catacombs that you can see, and they're they're just pretty nifty, okay. And uh, so we saw we saw those. And that was a whole day of touring that. And then one day we went to the Vatican and we uh, got to see the Vatican and um, the Sistine Chapel with all that artwork. And as, you know, even back then I was an artist and seeing all that was just really interesting. And I was trying to imagine anybody getting up on the ceiling and on their back and painting anything. Now, just so you know that um, he did not, the artist, uh, Michelangelo, did not freehand the ceiling in. How he did that was um, he did the drawings. He had the paper. He did the drawings. And then there's scaffolding. He has up the scaffolding. Even today, if you were to have someone come into your house and do a mural, say, on your ceiling, you know, there are people that will be willing to get up on scaffolding and do that, right? The um, You can... Um, uh, they have to, you know, there's it's, it's, it's good mural artists have to usually own their own scaffolding too. It's um, it's a thing. So yeah, yeah, you can have that done. Uh, even today. So uh, he was up there scaffolding, but he had a. Have you, you guys ever seen a pizza wheel? It, it has one with spikes in it, and it would poke holes in the paper. And then he would take like this little pow bag of powder, you know, like chalk powder, tied at the top like a little pouch thing, and he would punch, do powdered all the holes, and then what was left was the drawing, okay? So while he, it's true, he was on the back, his back, and he was doing very interesting things, uh, painting up there. Um, Again, he wasn't just freehanding it. I know, I know a lot of people thought maybe that wasn't done. And a lot of people didn't know how he did the sculptures either. Um, imagine if this, um, this gesso was a sculpture, okay? Imagine it's a person. So he would carve that out of clay, all right? The size, uh, you know, you know carve carve it, you know, make it out of clay, not carve it, you know, take, do it out of clay, make the whole thing, right? And then he would fire that, and then 
he had a um, big block of square marble the size, you know, the size of his statue, big, big, huge thing. And then he, he would put his, his clay statue in this square, square beacon of a uh, glass, glass container that was a square, like the, um, just like his square block of marble. And then he would um, then fill it with muddy water and then just um, carve from the top what he could see. And that's how he got his statues so perfect. And they're impressive. If you've, got to see, if you've never seen one, I've got to tell you, they're impressive. Okay? No question about it. Most, most, impression, most impressive. So anyhow, so we got to see some of those statues. And seeing them in real life was interesting. I mean, really was. And then uh, uh, one of the things that we, that, we, that we had a free day, we all had these free days, and we could go uh, shopping. And uh, I, I, had started, I had started in England, and I had bought a white leather hat. Okay? And I don't know, but I did, a white leather hat. And then in um, some other country, I don't know, it was in France, I think, in Paris, I think, I bought um, uh, a leather vest that was the same, um, was the same um, uh, le kind of colored le leather and everything as my, um, um, as my, uh, my hat. And then what I needed was some shoes. And then I got another country, I got a purse. I had a matching purse. And so then all I needed was a, um, um, the, I just needed the, the shoes. So it was kind of, I was on a roll, man. And you know, I was, nobody would, no, there was no parent there to tell me I couldn't have that or that was too expensive. We had traveler's checks and um, I think I ran out of money, and my dad had to wire some more. At the end of the trip, I think he wired us some more money. Um, the other kids on the trip seemed to have a little bit more spending money than my sister and I did, but my, we had plenty. My parents were just, adopted parents weren't just totally crazy, you know. We actually had plenty of money to spend, right? I mean, you know, and, and our meals and everything were all paid for. Um, even if there was absolutely nothing to drink at dinner. And <laughs> just all the reasons why, God, there's nothing to drink here. This is just terrible. But anyway, so when I was shopping in Rome, I was off by myself. This is crazy. You know, you hear about kids getting kidnapped and all this kind of stuff. And, and it was really insane for me to be going anywhere shopping, okay, alone. But, uh, you know, the chaperones, you know, were, it was kind of a vague, loose term for them, okay. They were not as that, that concerned, okay? Now, I don't, I guess it sounds like I'm blaming them, and I, I guess, um, I'm not sure that I blame them. Let me bring this up a little higher. Make it a little bigger. But, you know, nobody was watching out. You know, my sister was taking a nap in the hotel, and I was off shopping. And so I didn't have enough money for the shoes. I did not have it. They were high heel shoes, which of course uh, I wasn't allowed to wear. High at fourteen, I wasn't wearing any any kind of high heel shoes at my house. But I had the I had the outfit, man. Taking me, you know, I don't know five countries to get it, but I had the outfit. And so when I I was so disappointed because I really didn't have the money uh, for the um, for the for the shoes. So I told the guy if 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 he would come back to my hotel room. I would have the money for him in my sort of broken English on how good his English was. Now, I didn't really look 14, I gotta tell you. Probably, I mean, I didn't look like a 14. I was naive like a 14 year old kid. I did not look 14. And it didn't occur to me until years later that the guy might have thought that I was inviting him back to have sex. It just occurred to me at all that he might have thought that, right? But um, when he, came in the hotel room, my sister gave him the traveler's checks and, you know, whatever it was, and, and uh, we, 
uh, we got the, um, uh, I got my shoes. And it's just a thing later. Just, I can't believe I drug this guy back to the hotel. Though the shoes were ex were not cheap. Uh, I don't know if they were. But, you know, I was not at an age to understand. And the other thing that I did when I was in Italy, we had some free time, like I say. other thing I did was I got to get, decided to get my hair colored on my free day of walking about. <laughs> I thought I'd dye my hair. And it occurred to me that people with blonde hair seem to do better in life than the, the people with brown hair. That had been my observation. And it wasn't, I didn't feel like it was wrong. My sister was a brunette, and she did okay because she had pretty dark brown, almost black hair. And I had this sort of mousy brown hair that didn't, eh, you know what I mean? It was an eh kind of hair, right? It was terrible. So I, I, I never liked my hair color, or the, the, my, and I was constantly, uh, I, I wanted to change it, but it wasn't, um, it wasn't possible. My parents didn't believe in hairdressers. My mother did her own hair, not a religious thing. She just, you know, she cut her own hair. Um, I think she'd taken me, she had taken me, before we went to Europe, she took me to a hair salon in, um, in, uh, in Seattle about there in Bellevue, back where I live, she'd taken me to this hair salon and had me cut my hair um, very short. It was like in a pixie hairstyle. It was very short and under a heat lamp. I don't know if anybody remembers that, but it was under a heat lamp because there was this theory that um, if you had any kind of curl in your hair, if they cut it under a heat lamp, it would show up. Now, I never had any kind of curl ever. There was not a heat lamp in the world that would have turned my hair into something curly, okay? Just wasn't going to happen. And um, uh, so that was sort of, a, but it was a cute haircut. In fact, the haircut was so cute that uh, at the after, you know, I, graduated, I just graduated from the ninth grade. My best friend saw my hair, and she had, she had hair, you guys. She had a hair that was looked like a, the bewitched, you know, she had that kind of hairstyle and um, kind of a flip, you know, blonde flip, and she had she colored her hair. I think that maybe was got the desire to do that. Is she she had her hair, hair colored, and I really wanted to to color my hair. I wanted I wanted to color my hair too, but that wasn't going to fly at my house. I mean, just you know, I mean, it's not something people did, but. Because I gotta say, my mother had naturally curly hair, and she cut it over a steam kettle. Not how she managed the back, but it always looked nice. So, um, anyhow, so I went to this hair salon in Rome, and I had them um, frost it with blonde streaks. Okay, and what they did, I, I remember walking in there. It was a big fancy hair salon. I, I picked a good place. It was a big fancy. Um, uh, big, big, and it was very fancy. Okay, and um, uh, several floors of hairdressers and stuff. And so I got, I went in. I still remember this place. And um, she, they put, they put some sort of like clips on my hair, sections of my hair with rods, like something out of a science fiction movie, like an octopus, all coming out of my head. And then I'm sitting under a and uh, sitting under a, um, a lamp, a lamp while this, uh, you know, while this processed. And there was a lady sitting next to me. When they took it out, all the places where they'd done my hair, uh, that color was just stark white, like white like this paper towel. I remember looking at that thinking, because it, you know, that was one of those people that was constantly, those kids that was constantly looking at magazines and just thinking if I could just look like that. Never understanding. I was perfectly fine the way I was, but you know, never, no one ever thinks they're perfectly fine the way they are. Everybody wants to look different, or at least most of the kids I've ever met did. They want to look look like that. My curly haired friends always wanted straight hair, and the straight haired kids are I can't keep a curl and all that stuff, right? So, um, anyhow, um, I'm having sort of this is sort of a strange little painting, but it's it's coming together. Uh, for those of you who have joined us late, this is story time, um, and um, these are commissioned uh, paintings that have been sold, and um, uh, uh, so this is not a tutorial. 
Uh, but we are having fun painting it, and I'm just telling you about some of those odd things that happened um, when I took my first teenage tour to Europe in um, uh, 1961, right, John? 1961. 1961. Yeah. So, anyhow, so the upshot of this was that I came out of the salon and my hair looked just absolutely beautiful. Oh yeah, that one lady said it's not gonna look like that. So they, they didn't leave it. They, they put what's called a toner on it, toned the hair down, and um, it, it was wonderful. I mean, it really looked good. It just really cute, and I had that short hair, haircut. And it really looked nice. So when I got home, nobody was mad about it because it, it really did, did look really nice. Conversely, I can remember my sister uh, sometime later fixing, you know, trying to, she had that dark hair and she got it, you know, how you go to the drugstore and they, they give you this pretty picture of what the person is. You can look like this, you just have to, you know, buy this box and put it on your head and, and you know, put all these products on your head and you're, you too can look like this, right? Uh, you, you really don't. So she, she, had, she tried to put some blonde streaks in her hair and uh, my mother, I remember her mother, she came out, and she just had one, like, kind of like a skunk stripe, I guess. And my mother looked at her and said, you look, told my sister, you look like you've washed your hair in urine. I <laughs> just, and then took her to the hair dryer and hairdresser and had that fixed, okay? So that was, uh, you know, unfortunate, yes and yes. That was, that was unfortunate because um, she just really never after that colored her hair. She was just never bothered. I think that just kind of scarred her forever. Um, so that was a, something that, you know, in Italy, that was really good. In France, I found, I discovered perf uh, perfume. Uh, my mother wore, wore something. She wore a perfume called Shalimar. Oh, I remember hearing that name. And um, she, her whole life she wore it. That's where it's her perfume. And if I... Smell Shal Shalimar to this day. Can't help but think of my mother because that was her, that's what she wore. This is the Shalimar. Um, but I got Joy. I got hooked on Joy at 14, which is a very expensive perfume. They don't make it anymore. They did for years and years. And, uh, but I didn't, but again, even though I had a bottle of it, I wasn't, it wasn't like I was wearing it all the time or anything, you know, just that was sort of my go-to perfume. I have to dry this. So we're at story time, talking about my first trip to Europe with all those kids. And um, one of the places that we went to when we were in, um, uh, was, it was in Italy, was we had a trip to Pompeii. And that was something. Now, conversely, John and I went to Pompeii last, last summer. And um, it was so, it was like a, there you had to take, there was a tour, you had to take, uh, well, of course there was a tour before too, but it was like um, in front of Pompeii, the actual place that's all walled in, you had, to, you had all these vendors and, you know, like a flea market and a restaurants and chaos, okay? Got to tell you guys, chaos, that was not the Pompeii that I saw when I went. And we were talking, John and I were talking about this at the car today, is that the... The, the Europe that I saw, okay, the Europe that I saw is such a different Europe than, um, than what John and I saw this year. It's just not even, you, you just, you can't not believe it. It's just, just not the same at all. And um, 
the the crowds, the people. The I remember we, we we went to Pompeii, and we also went to Venice. And Venice was delightful. I remember there are a lot of pigeons and stuff in the streets. And um, I remember going to a glass blower and seeing and you know buying some cute little knickknacks of glass and um, riding in a gondola and. Uh, it wasn't crowded, um, and if you think about the, if you've ever seen the movies where you know the, the, a lot of movies are made in Venice, yeah, um, it was like that. It wasn't so when John went, I was sick when we got to Venice this year. Um, I was sick. I had come down with a with a pretty good cold, and when we had gotten off the airplane. Um, uh, like 10 o'clock that night, we were, we were scheduled to stay, this was this trip this year, we were scheduled to stay uh, th uh, three nights in Venice, so we'd have two full days to go explore the city, okay? And then um, and then we had a bus tour back to our um, um, hotel, or back to our ship. Uh, um, that was... Um, uh, after that, it was like a three and a half hour ride, and we had it through the cruise line. We had this bus tour that we're d we're doing, um, you know, on, on back to the cruise ship, so we didn't have to, you know, they they but the cruises used to f uh, you could actually pick up a cruise in Venice uh, some time ago, but um, uh, now they've uh, made it rather difficult to do that. Okay. Well, it's so crowded. It's so crowded. Then they, then they, they didn't really want the cruise ships in there anymore like that. So uh, anyway, so John, I was sick. So I said, and then we got to the, when we got, uh, we had flown and taken us all day. We left, we left Barcelona in the morning, and then we flew to Lisbon, on um, Air uh, Portugal or called TAP Airlines. Okay, and we had used them before. And we had some points with them, you know, like some miles. So we actually had a first, some first-class uh, seats, okay? And um, you'd have thought that would have been okay, right? But no, not so much okay. Um, the, um, this roof here, as I'm thinking about it. Um, we got off, you know, then we... With it. We got to, we got started in the morning and we left Spain, and we got we got to Venice, like at ten almost eleven o'clock at night, and um, the, our luggage wasn't with us. So, anyhow, the um, uh, the lady at the at the baggage thing says, "Oh, don't worry, this happens all the time." And then off we went. And then then we were just sort of stuck, kind of stranded. And so, but there was we, there was nothing we could do about it. So I said, John, you go ahead and um, go, go on into the city, and go because we were at the hotel. We got this time was um, right outside of the actual city. We didn't go into the city, and you you well you walked across the bridge, and and then you, there was a bus you took, and then it took you it what did you didn't do any boat rides or anything, Ron? Just John, right? Nope. He went right to the city. Right yes, to the city. yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, anyhow, um, uh, sorry, I'm sorry. I'm just digressing. I'm focusing on this and telling you the story as we paint, but it's kind of fun, isn't it? So, anyway, so John, John got to Venice. And um, he went, and I was back at the hotel. So many people. Unbelievable amounts of people. Yes, John? Oh, yes. And uh, the crowded, uh, the, every, every store was crowded, every restaurant, every, um, well, you tell that part, John, because you were there, okay? Well, everywhere I went, there was just hundreds and hundreds of people. And everybody just clamoring to get all their selfies and standing in the way. and You, you couldn't even move. It was just... 
It's not what I had pictured when I had, you know, we're going to Venice, oh, this will be fun. The water was not very clear. Well, it wasn't clear at all. It was very yucky looking. Boats were noisy. There was honking going on. I mean, it's just not what, it's not like the movies that you think it is. You know, when you, you see the movies and you see all this stuff. So it was a little disappointing. I'm glad I've done it. I can check it off the list. But I'm not in a hurry to go back. Yeah, and that's a shame, isn't it? You yeah, know? it is. So, because I'd like to have seen more of it. Yeah. So when I went, it was just delightful. Oh my gosh, it was just it was magic, and I loved riding on the gondolas. And I mean, it was just a magic place. And that was how many years ago? Well, it was yeah. <laughs> how many years ago was that, John? Well, let's see. You went in '61. We're in '23. There's a two sixty-two years ago. Okay, well, I guess okay, things so change. there's a little time has passed. All right, okay. a little, not much. <laughs> it's a little time has passed. All right, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Okay, so a little time has passed, yeah? And, uh, okay, yeah, I could, I could see where um, that, that might be a little misleading, you know? Yeah. But, um... But we went 62 years ago, it was like in the movies, and it was really great. And, um, and in spite of the weird food, and I really remember, they had something called gelato, which today I think is like the most magnificent stuff ever. Italian gelato is just, um, and there's grades of it, of course, just like anybody's ice cream, but oh my gosh, it was so good. And um, when I was there, I couldn't stand it. I said, what is this ice cream? It's this horrible ice cream. I just, I just don't like the ice cream. You know, there's certain factors that you kind of need to keep in mind, right? And um, th th there was no great ice cream, which was extremely disappointing. So, anyhow, uh, moving on. But back when, back, back in the, you know, as they, as they say in the old days, back in the day, okay? Back in the day. Back in the day. There was um, um, there weren't the tourists everywhere, okay, and it was fun. It just really was fun to go because because of that. They're just they're just we had a really good time. Venice was wonderful, and then we went to we went to Pompeii. Uh, we saw the Leaning Tower of Pisa, and I walked up it. Now John's, you know, I, John will tell you I'm not one for walking. Ooh, no. Mm -mm. Uh, even back then, you know, walking wasn't my thing. But I remember walking up the, you know, going up to the t Leaning Tower of Pisa and walking up that. That was way cool. Um, and the world was just different. I, I know that sounds like old people, but it was just, <laughs> it was just different. Now, there was one thing is that when we were on the ship, and I may have told this before, and it may come up in other stories I tell too. If it does, I'm sorry, but you got to get the context of this, right? Um, uh, the officers and the crew were allowed to, uh, well, maybe they weren't allowed to, but they did, fraternize with the with the older um, students that we had with us, the older kids. And there was one guy, girl, and she started an affair with one of the uh, officers on the ship. Okay? And uh, the, when they found out about it, this was, bef you know, are we talking about B.C. before COVID? This was before birth control. Okay? There was no birth control for, they didn't even have birth control pills, nor would a 16 year old girl have gotten her hands of any birth control pills back then. There was no birth control. And um, the, they had, when, it, when, when the affair on the ship was discovered, um, they had to call her parents. And now please understand that calling uh, somebody's parents in the 60s like that, 1961, was like calling Mars, it's extremely expensive. I mean, somebody almost had to have died on the ship, you know, on the tour before 
calling her parents could have been justified, yeah? But um, they called them. And um, well, that's what they, what you had they called do. them, and then and then they. Um, uh, so then I remember when we were in in Rome, uh, you know, on shopping days or whatever my sister and I were doing, she was getting a pregnancy test, all right, to see that she wasn't pregnant, and they very came very close to sending her home and not refunding their money and, and sending her home. And the, because she did this, the other kids were really kind of crummy about it. She was then ostracized, and nobody was friends with her anymore. I mean, I wasn't friends with her anyway because she was like an older kid, right? But none of the other kids uh, were friends with her anymore because of that, okay? Which is kind of mean in itself, right? Kids can be cruel. Just well, yeah. So anyway, so she didn't have the, her trip to Europe was probably not the, the one I remembered. What I did remember was that there was, again, I I, I, I remember buying some gelato in Venice, and um, just going gah gah, you know, <laughs> just what is a kind of watered down ice cream, whatever I bought. I don't know what it was, but I, I didn't. I was not a big fan of it. Not, nonetheless. Um, I'm happy to say that we um, had a really good time, yeah? Really, really good time. And uh, let's see, we see Venice and we, and of course, when we did, we went to Paris, we saw the Eiffel Tower. And, and, and um, I don't remember if we walked up to the top of it or not. Okay, I really don't remember if I did that. Um, might have. Might have walked up to the top of it. But it's not coming back to me that whether we did that or not, right? I know it's kind of funny, but just kind of don't remember whether I did or not. But um, I remember being on the top of the Eiffel Tower and seeing the view of Paris, and we went to Notre Dame, which is the big church that burnt down, you know, had a big fire recently. We saw the Notre Dame. Um, now, something that was sort of interesting about a Paris was a, just along, you've got to appreciate that, the, you have to have seen the brochure of where we were going to be staying and what we were going to be doing, yes and yes? You just had to have appreciated that, yeah? And the reality was that when we got to Paris, the hotel was, I don't know, maybe our rooms were probably eight or nine floors up, maybe ten. And the only way up was this was this elevator. That's elevator. No. Yeah, yeah, elevator. And it was the first elevator they had ever installed in Paris. Maybe not in the world, but certainly one of the first elevators in the world. And before the wars, before I think both wars probably over there and so and it had um i mean i could just draw you guys a picture real quick because this is very interesting okay i still remember this because i can't could they wouldn't let us ride in it which was extremely annoying so you had to here was your elevator you had your box right okay and then in the middle of it was it's this big tube like this somehow maybe it came up like this I don't know you know like like this okay there was this big tube and water was going up and down it and that in it water was what pushed it up and down so you could put your suitcases in it but that was so old that they felt that um, you might die if you got in it. <laughs> <laughs> Just seriously, seriously, okay? Uh, I kid you not, that's what they thought, right? Okay, <laughs> Just so old, you could actually um, have, you know. So I, I'm telling you what, that, that is not the height of luxury, walking up all those flights of stairs to get you to your room, to your friends. It just isn't matter who you talk to okay 
Um, so that was um, that was funny. So that was our elevator experience, and um, uh, and then we, of course, from Paris we went. You know, everywhere. And then we went shopping. You know, there was shopping in Paris. Um, and and then even when Sandra and I went to went to to Paris, we got some shopping in. Um, John and I, when we travel now, we don't do any shopping. Nope. There's no shopping. We don't. We're not shoppers. Um, you know, there's. It just. I think it depends on. Um, where you are, what stage of life you're in. We don't, you know, I have more than enough clothes. I don't need to buy any clothes. Um, I don't know. We're not shoppers. We did buy a, when we were in Turkey last year, summer, we did buy a fabulously beautiful rug that we watched. We saw how they were handmade and everything. And um, we did that. But, but that's probably the only thing we ever bought, wasn't it? Yep. And oh, well, when we, we lost our luggage, well, we had to buy a lawyer. We had to buy we had to buy a suitcase, and then we had to try and find clothes. And I was really sick, so we took a taxi to a mall, which was like thirty minutes away. Was that was a taxi ride in itself, just paying for that. And um, the uh, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> uh, the um, We, you know, to, but you know, and then finally, <clears throat> we did get our luggage back the last, very last day. And that's a whole other tale about that, the luggage. But we did it. We did it. Get back. To, we did get it back to have it on the trip. Okay. But um, for the most part, there was um, uh, you were not talking about uh, in, any any luggage. There's no. Um, uh, we weren't buying anything. I mean, there was just really nothing to buy. Okay. So you're sitting there saying that. So if you came in late and you're wondering what we're doing here, this is a um, uh, a, a commission painting that I'm doing through, from people that have been uh, renewed their academy memberships, their art lessons memberships with our art school, online art school, uh, for an, an annual, and we're running a special. John, when I'm drawing, he, he can't tell you, but maybe no, I'll, I'll just, tell you. I'll just, why don't you tell him, I'll just quite quiet for a minute, tell people what that's about. What, you're not going to talk? Well, just tell him for a second. I'm just, I have to focus here, so just tell him for a minute. Oh, okay. All right, well, we're doing um, commission pieces. These are people that have signed up for a yearly membership during the month of November and December. It will end on December 31st. If you want to take advantage of this and get a Ginger Cook original, that's a non-tutorial, never before seen in the human brain. Now's the time to do it. They are offered in different sizes and goodies. And I have a, I can think I can copy some things over here so you guys will have this in the reference in the, in the chat. Uh, even if you're a existing yearly member, you can renew early and still take advantage and get a painting. Where did I put these? Oh, I know where they are. And if you've never been a member. And if you've never been a member, now's the time to do it. If you're thinking about it, because you saved like two months anyway. Yeah? Yep. Yes and yes? So okay, we'll let's give this a dry real quick. So that's what we're doing right now. And, and so, and this is story time, and we figured since I got to paint the paintings anyway, <clears throat> and I have quite a few, <clears throat> quite a few to paint. Get a little water here. Yeah, we've got 
Oh, probably over 50 to do right now. So we'll be on for a while. So we just thought we do this on YouTube, and I hope your guys are enjoying the, you know, the essence of the story time, right? I certainly am. Are you? I am indeed. All right, so. So that's really the idea, and if you have questions or need help doing this or want more information, you to contact us on the website, paintingwithginger.com. Um, one of the things that was sort of fun on this first teenage trip to Europe that was, um, was really delightful, really, was just, was, uh, when we were in, one of the, th you know, one of the things that most, from a child's point of view, you've got to see it from a kid's point of view, right? From a kid's point of view, you know, after you've seen a couple churches, you kind of think you've seen them. Now I have a girlfriend who's, you know, like, you know, um, you know, almost 82, and she still thinks that, okay? You know, from the time she and her husband went to Europe and about the fourth church, she was just over it, right? And they, they couldn't wait to see the next one, right? So, I mean, everybody has different interests for sure when they travel, no question about it, you know? They do, but... Um, Uh, when we were traveling, you got to understand the age of this. Of course, I was the young, you know, youngest, but still, um, when we were in London, we started off in London with castles. Now, you can pretty much capture the ch a child's event. Maybe not so much churches, but you offer them castles, and that's quite nice. And we saw the Tower of London, and there's a lot of castles you can visit in Europe. You More know, the, they'll have. let you see. So we were up for the castles, okay? And one of the things, and we, of course, they were all guided tours. You know, you couldn't just run off on your own and go cap, ca castle happy, okay? But um, um, we were always looking for, like, hidden hidden passages. We'd be walk, you know, tapping on the walls and stuff. The guy was going crazy, you know, Maybe there's one here. You guys think there's a think there's a hidden passage here, kind of thing, right? And um, that was fun. Come on, you guys. That's that was really quite fun. Yeah, you know, look, fun. Looking for the hidden, looking for the hidden, hidden passages. I think it'd be fun to do that. Yeah, and then, uh, but we did we did see a lot of um, no no question about it. We certainly saw a lot of um, a lot of churches too. And um, I'm just talking, I'm sitting, talking to you and trying to remember to decide where I'm going to put all this color. For those of you who don't know, that on Christmas Day we'll be having a live show in the later evening, 4 or 5 Central Time. Yes. And we don't know what we'll be painting or doing. No, so Cinnamon, Cinnamon and I both are going, my daughter Cinnamon, you know, now known as the Archer Pro. Now known as. You know, used to just AKA. be my kid, but now she's the Archer Pro, right? She will be... Um, uh, you know, doing a, I think she said she's going to start about one o'clock with her show, and then we thinking we're thinking after her, so it might be a little bit before. Might be three. Five. She's think she's figuring on two and a half hours, maybe for the painting that she's going to be doing or whatever her project is. We we I don't I would tell you, but I don't know. Uh, she, I, she'd kill me, right? I don't. I'm no. I'm kidding. I don't know what her project <laughs> is, or I would tell Any you. Any more mean, than we know what ours is. Yeah, you know, really, honestly, it's not. It's not Christmas Day. We we certainly won't discuss that until Christmas. But um, um, uh, 
uh, she for sure, uh, I think that'll be fun. I mean, we, we'll have a good time. Somebody said, what are you guys doing for Christmas? That, that's what we're doing for Christmas. Uh, traditionally, I used to always go to a movie in the afternoon on Christmas. Oh, yeah. yeah but everybody, everybody on the planet that. is sick right now. I'm not going, not going to. Well, we <laughs> might throw up the old TV and pick a movie. Yeah, just pick a movie or something. We could do the Harry Potter uh, marathons. Yeah, that's right. You know, get a Mary, yeah, get a Harry Potter marathon going. And uh, so, um, yeah, no, that's that's true, John. So, um, anyhow, back to you know. My adventures in Europe. I've got to dry this, though. Okay. Oh, oh another cliffhanger. So the, um, yeah, this, um, just put this brush up here for a minute. Going to turn this around, I think. Whoops. Need a new place to wipe off here. Get all set, situated here with my little painting here. Is this six by eight? If anybody wants to know what a size and I'm painting. Just slightly, just a, like a half inch to the left. Well, that's a big half inch. Yeah, sure. That's good there. Okay. You got the window in front of you. I know. I did. I, <laughs> I know. You're focused. Are you using a fur brush? Yeah. What are you about to paint? Oh, the furry, gotcha. The furry plants. Okay. All right, so yeah, I'm using a little fur brush. This tour. So I mean, if that uh, Italy was one of my favorite places. Um, I don't remember us going to any museums, but we did go to you know the, the churches and those kinds of things. They're museums in themselves. All right. They are. They're they're they're, they're a museum in themselves because of the uh, all the art. Everything's so old and beautiful. And. Um, And preserved. I mean, you know, and then during, I think during the wars, that everybody was pretty good about not bombing churches. People were fair game, but um, churches were not. So they, they maybe were saved a little bit more than otherwise they would have been. You know, you know, they weren't. Because I mean, some of these, like if you, for instance, if you see that, uh, what, read that movie, The Pillars of the Earth, or, the, you know, this is about how they, um, if you look at some of these churches and how old they are, and the technology that they, they took maybe 200 years to build. They'd get started, it took a long time. They really are something, okay? So, um, um, Uh, just totally magnificent. 
And even for a 14-year-old kid, I could see where they were just amazing. And uh, my parents bought me a little, little camera. I bought a lot of film. But back in those days, you couldn't now do it now, but back in those days, um, they, they, they were all these street vendors, and they were selling um, uh, slides. Total, yeah, selling slides. I just had a paint again. Just got green paint. And I remember um, those, yeah. That, so you could buy, you could, you know, so maybe you didn't actually take the picture, but you could come home and say, this was where we went and show all your friends. And people would go to other people's houses. And um, this was before color TV. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> geez, oh, Pete, did you have electricity? And look at people's boring slideshows of hey, their, their hey, trip. Hey, 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 you know, I used to do that, too. What do you mean you used to do that, too? We had slideshows. I was doing photography all the time. We had, we had you know, a gang come over and do, go over my, my photos. You had friends that was willing to do that with you? Yeah, it probably came from the food. You know, Karen's cooking. I mean, that's really the bottom line. <laughs> that's just, you know, I mean... I know that everybody, you know, come over and we'll show you pictures of our kids when they were three, that kind of thing. And then yeah, the home movies. The home movie <laughs> things. There was a big home movie th thing. I remember Cinnamon wanted to know why we didn't have any pictures of her when she was a kid, considering her dad was a photographer. And that was a hard one to answer, really, on, when, you know, when we, you got so right down to it. what is the answer to that one? Um, I don't know that... Um, he, he wasn't very well organized. I don't know that he kept them or something, you know. Um, hmm. They kept them, but we... Anyway, she was a little disgruntled about that. I would imagine. You know, that, that thought we were, you know, but her friends, you know, we dug, we dug out some, but um, we, had, we had some, but, you know. So uh, now it started getting interesting, isn't it, the painting? Before it was just so well, what well, she's painting something, but do you remember where my little bridge is, the the plastic one that we have that Yep, sure do. I'd sure like that. On a little painting like that? No, I wanna show something. I wanna oh. demonstrate it. I um I wanna demonstrate something. Gotcha. Um making little dots like this is not hard. You're just not pushing hard. You know, you're barely touching it like if somebody were sunburned, and they're going, ouch, ouch, every time you touch them, right? But a lot of times people have trouble with these little brush marks. You'll see, I'm, I'm resting my, my wrist on this board. My wrist is on this board, I'm up a little higher. I want to just mention that, but these really aren't tutorials, but I think this has come up enough in, in art lessons where... We're sharing I'm, intel. I'm just gonna share some intel, because sometimes it's kind of nice to know why you might want to buy something. So yeah, be aware of what you're showing in here. the window. So if this were my bridge, and I would raise my hand up like this, I would. I can now. You see, I'm even higher. That's um, what I'd have to paint it. There, I'm. I'm even higher. So I have the control here um, to. Um, to do these little dots, even though you know you got to be careful not to unload your, you know, load your face. You're also sweet and listening to the stories. And but one lady said every time she, you know, watches that, you know, she learns something. And you can see that the control I've got, because it doesn't take as much arm strength, to, um, to do this. Yes and yes. That was a good idea. So that's that's the advantage of of using a bridge. Is that you have a little bit more control and you could buy them. We don't sell them, but you can buy them on Amazon. 
um, in three sizes. I think they're about 40 bucks. And probably at some art store supplies too. You, you said Amazon has them? Yeah, I, I, and I put them in our art uh, wish list, John. Oh, um, you know, them. you saw the art, you know, the wish yeah, list maybe. thing? I've got them in the art wish list so mm -hmm. we could find them because I wanted to put them in the store mm -hmm. so people could find them easily. Yeah. Just another thing for me to play with. But it is, it is nice. I mean, you can see my hands up here. And I've got, for this little painting, I just have a lot more control than um, if I didn't have it, okay? It's on the Luxmore. You bought that one back in 2020. Yeah, we don't, we don't get it out very often. But it, it is nice, and I forget, I've, you know, do you ever get so many art supplies, you forget you have them? That's we, when you have too many art supplies. Well, I don't know. But, um, I'm thinking it is. So, um, they make uh, there was a lady 24. that made a comment on one of my videos, uh, one of our story time videos, mm -hmm. that oh. she enjoyed the story, but she said she, in her life, she had grown up uh, very... Uh, poor, you know, it's just, you know, not financially, you know, uh, s struggling. And she didn't realize there were people that, you know, that had that kind of money, that lived that rich. And we were not, believe it or not, in the school of rich people. We were just considered up, upper middle class. When she said, John, we were not. Oh, absolutely. We were not. Uh, John's parents could have afforded to send him on this trip if they'd wanted to. Your dad could have, you know, done that trip for you. Okay. Well, now you tell me. Well, I didn't know him, but he could have done it, right? I mean, he didn't, but he could have. Yeah. All right? And that's why I say that um, the... Um, I just need to get some paint mixed over here, the right color. I've got enough of this color where I really need it mixed here. Was I with the oh we're talking about the bridge right yep this bridge thing but how did the bridge come up with our trip and cruising because I was doing little dots on this well and then I was talking I was talking about you know the finances but you know we grow when you when you're a kid you just seem, seem like every you just assume that everybody else is kind of living like you are you know what I mean you don't know that any different like um I just assumed everybody's mother was an alcoholic because I had an alcoholic for a mother. Figured that everybody's mother acted that way, right? <laughs> and I can remember going over, you know, well, that's another story for another day, but I had some friends with some really nice parents and I kept waiting for them to lose it. You know what I mean? <laughs> just any minute now they're going to come unglued, but we'll hold our breath, right? And I remember one of my friends, I said, God, your mom's so nice. And she looked at me like I was on crack. I said, well, she's not nice. I said, well, you know what? She really is. <laughs> you have a really nice mother. You just don't realize what a nice mother you have, right? Your mother is pretty, pretty wonderful. And, um, and she was. You know, some of my friends were running around. I had some friends that were with some real nut bar mothers, too, though. Um, and then I think I wasn't such a great mother either. I was kind of a nut bar mother, but um, not intentionally. No one's ever intentionally end up by our mother. Everybody's just doing the best they can. And sometimes uh, some people do a little bit better job than others. Yes and yes. That's all you can do in life. Yeah, it's all you can do, really. So, um... Uh... 
I'm just still trying to get my different greens going here when I'm telling you this. Cheryl has an interesting comment. When I was growing up, I assumed everyone was from a family of 10 and had one bathroom. Yeah, because that's what you think, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. You Why don't know. Why do you think any different? And, um, yeah, you, you don't know. You're just, you're just kind of, you know, you just, that's where, you were, that's where you're at, right? And then, of course, you, you grow up with the, um, with the, the religion and the politics of your parents. And um, I remember Cinnamon's dad one time saying that uh, he was 10, 10 years old, but he, before, and he wasn't kidding, before he discovered that damn Democrat wasn't, wasn't one word. <laughs> Just, <laughs> true story. <laughs> and, and I remember when, when Ross Perot was running for president, my, my second husband, George, when he was running for, when Ross Perot was running for president, we went to vote, so we went to register to vote, and we got down, this is priceless, he, we got down to the registration office where they have the signs, you know, Republicans are this way, and you know, to register to vote, and I started to walk the other way, and he said, wait a minute, where are you going? I said, I'm going to register to vote. He says, he said this really loud, oh my God, you're a Democrat? <laughs> I've been married like five years or something. Oh my gosh. Yeah. No, just probably first sign of where the mar marriage was in trouble, right? Just was, uh, but I, I remember that I, I wanted Ross Perot to win. Uh, that was my thing. I wanted Ross Perot to win. But then he kept saying that he had these five perfect children. And I'm thinking, oh my, I come from a family of five. There's no such things as five perfect children. You may think all those kids are perfect, but I promise you, if the one's out of line, there will be a reporter to discover it and then offer to make it public. And then someone else will use it against you and say, if you don't want that to happen, how would you like to just forget the whole thing? Remember, he just stopped and he said, I can't believe you did it. And I said, I was waiting for him to do it. That comment with the five, five perfect children was I'm going, no, just... Even in the Bible, there was this guy didn't have five perfect children. Remember that story about the prodigal son? Oh, yeah. There was not five perfect. Nobody has five perfect. You may think, of, you know, and then You for may instance, think you have it. And then the thing of it is, is that, you know, like, for instance, my mother didn't know half the, didn't know half the stuff I did. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just didn't know half. That's just, that was just, you just kept it... Um, and now the kids are so smart, you know what I mean? It's, I, I was a pretty smart little kid, cookie when it came to stuff like that, but oh no, they are. As compared to what they have now, they have all the knowledge at their fingertips. Yeah, yeah, they had all the, uh, all the knowledge, absolutely. So, um, yeah, the, the, just, it's very interesting, um, you know, how much, you know, kids, you know, know today compared to um, where they were, you know, when we were growing up. Just, well, again, um, my, when my, um, my niece, who's, my niece, who's, um, well, let's see, Brittany's got to be in her 30s when she was in, she's my sister's granddaughter. She was in the, I think in junior high, no, not even junior high, maybe the 12th, you know, 11th, what, be like the sixth grade. She had to to write a um, an essay on um, people that um, of, of difference, you know, what gay people or whatever. But she had to write a she had to write a um, she had to write a paper on that, and you know that. You know that wasn't ever discussed in our house, and so my my um, well things change, right? But when my sister started dating this what what any any normal person would call a ne'er do well, do you know that expression ne'er do well? I'm not familiar with that one. Yeah, just uh, yeah this 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 boy. 
my sister started dating him, and it came from a, you know, his dad was a dentist and seemed like a kid. Got, he was uh, older than my sister, a skier, and she ended up marrying him. The marriage lasted, I don't know, about three months, I think, but less than a year. And um, I remember him taking us <clears throat> to a transvestite bar in Seattle after we'd all gone down to to um, to Seattle for Chinese dinner. My family, my judge and his punky and everybody. And then Jeff said he'd take us home. We'd we'd be home in a little while. And I don't know what my parents were going to go off and do something else. And we ended up. I don't know how. You had to be 21 to get in this, but I don't know. He knew some people. He knew people with odd names like Sweet Pea, and <laughs> just you know, he his friends were very odd, right? Well, they were all drug dealers, is what they were. But you know, I mean, I'm I was like, probably just come home from Europe. So like, I was like, you know, maybe it's a year after I was like 15, and somehow, um, you know, you just don't think you can be any more shocked. And then, some some grown ups takes you in, into a place like that. Yes and yes, and um, um, I was shocked. Um, but, you know, and then if my father had found out, um, he probably just would have found himself in a, you know, in, a, in pieces in a back alley in Seattle. Because my dad, you know, after all, prosecuted criminals and he knew some. You know what I mean? I don't think that, I th he, he wouldn't have liked it at all. I'm just saying. He just wouldn't have liked it. But the trick of it is he never, you know, they just never found out. Yeah? I know this is also shocking, but back in but back when we were seeing in Europe, we were going to Europe and these kind of places, where um, um, when my sister and I, we really it was a land of innocence, John. Just total innocence. That's what we were. Just totally, it's totally innocent. It was lovely. <laughs> we just didn't know anything, right? You just couldn't be shocked and. Which is true. You, you would you would bring somebody home to your hotel room thinking that they just, you know, just just it seemed well why not right <laughs> just because, um, and you know a lot of times kids just walk through the raindrops, you know because in all fairness they should just just died, with the, you know, shenanigans and getting in trouble and all that stuff right. But I have to say that I am very glad we went. Um, I got to dry again. Turn on some some of the light here. Oh, let's see, where's another little brush? Yeah, you can't really. You have to dry if you're going to go up a little bit with the light. I have to say, I like the. the I'm glad I brought out the little um, uh, bridge here. This little plastic bridge for to rest my arm on. And I was thinking that, you know, I told, I told one of our students about it, John, at personal art coaching, and I noticed that that the ability to make these tiny little brush strokes like I'm doing right here. Oh, it would be very hard on the arm to keep your arm up that long. And, um... I would think. Yeah. You know? And, uh... So... 
so um, I'm just enjoying the painting. It's not, how long have I been talking here? I don't have a watch on. A uh, buck and a half. Well, you know, it takes so long. If I had done this 8 by 10 or, nine, you know, 8 by 10, this would have taken me about an extra 30 minutes. Um, We've got a lot of 6 by 8s to do, boss. But I have a lot of 6 by 8s, and I want to take the time with them as I would if they were anything else. We appreciate so much everybody that, um, it, you know, became annual members for us and expanded their membership. Okay? It was a lovely thing to do. And uh, I want to make sure that their paintings are just as marvelous as anything else I do. And I think this one's coming to coming out now, finally. What do you think, John? I think it's been great. So, um, I think you should probably do it bigger too. Yeah, I want to do this larger so that I can add a little bit more detail. Um, I've got a couple more 12 by 16 to do. We might do one of those there. Yeah, it might make, make this 12 by 16 and really even expand on it even then. Oh yeah, you got so much much more control when you're resting your hand on this, particularly you're painting flat. Now, if you weren't painting flat, you guys, if you weren't painting flat, then you would buy something called um, it's like a it's like a long stick, but it's tapered and it has a little ball on the end of it, so that you and you rest your arm against that. Okay. Which is easier. I think that would be easier. Oh, yeah, this is easier, absolutely. Absolutely easier. surprised what you can do with small paintings. I remember going to the art museum in the Metropolitan of Art in, uh, in New York City and there was a small painting like this of pansies that was so beautiful I took a picture of it. Um, it was little but my gosh it was wonderful but you know if you think about it, when we were, John and I were in Russia, I'd always wanted to see these in person. They had these boxes that are, they, they paint them under a microscope. And, and there's such detail and it's so small. But you've got to be able to, um, to see them.
now, let me see, let me just pull this down here so I can kind of add the final light, light colors on top of this. The problem with acrylics is, you know, they dry darker, so you think you've got the light color and you don't. Just, I'm not sick or anything. Just keeps hanging on here. Sarah still has a bit of her cough, too. Does, does she? Yeah, it's just the way it is, right? You're just, just the way it kind is. of hanging on here. You can't be helped, John. It's just one of those things, right? Just a fact of life, my dear. Let me try that real quick. That's looking pretty good. Yeah, just yeah. got a couple more touch ups, and I think I'm pretty close to being done. We're just going to do something. There you go, something like this. Dried this? Yeah, I think so.
Let's see the frame we've got, okay? Just want to do something with this spot right there. I don't, don't like this way this blue is looking. But I'm pretty much happy with the rest of the painting. looking good. Primo even. Oh, this one I got to plug in so when you you get it good and dry and I'll back out the camera and yeah, give me a little slipper in there. It's too dark right there. Okay. Uh, bridge and dry this and um, pretty much Try that for a second and glaze that back. Put this right way. Okay, where's my frame, you? You ready? Yeah. Here's our little frame here. Let's see how we how we did with this. It all dried off. Yeah, what happened? Your bridge. Oh, what was it? your bridge fell down. Well, there's nowhere to put it. It's a problem. Well, no, that's why we never have it out. That's why we never have it out. There's nowhere to put it. There you go. Thanks. Put that in the frame for me. <laughs> yes. So I can see. Do my last finishing touches. 
in a frame. He's, while he's doing that, I'll just uh, want to thank everybody for watching and uh, you know hanging out there with me. So we have lots of stories to tell. This is just one in the, you know. Okay. So I would say that that for a tiny little six by eight painting, I think that came out. Um, as I was hoping it would. Uh, sometimes when I when I see something like this, I can and add something or take something away or. But I would say, for the most part, this is. I'm more than happy with how this how this came out, and I can, so it's a little hard to sign, uh, because you can see how much of the frame is gonna be, is gonna be lost when I sign it. So if I take one of these small pens, probably the best place I can sign it is right there, John. Where? Right here. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Um, I'll put the red slash through it in a little bit. So anyway, there we are. We got a Tuscan f farm and kind of uh, you know reminiscing about my uh, trip to Italy. And again, these are not tutorials. They're just uh, paintings that have already been sold, and I'm just uh, painting them anyway. So I'm just letting you you know hang out with me and paint. You know, I paint them, and I will be happy to. Um, I'm happy to share the. Um, the experiences of our travels in my life and some of the weird things that have happened because according to other people what happened to me was rather unusual <laughs> in in the long run yes yeah it seems pretty normal to me so anyway thank you guys and see you tomorrow for story time possibly and, uh, never guaranteed but possibly but we're, we're hoping to be able to um i mean we've got a few to do do we have a like i say we have a we have a few to do and we're hoping that tomorrow will be a good uh, st story time too and, um, and we look forward to uh, your comments. At the, uh, I appreciate so much your feedback and your comments when you write them at the end of the video. And I always think Steffi she writes all the time. And some of you write all the time. But if you haven't taken a moment to write, you know, I love hearing from you, hearing what you think about these things. And, uh, you know, um, I'm looking forward to this expanding on YouTube. And I appreciate it if, you know, if you're subscribed to the channel and tell us of others about us. So, uh, so till next time, uh, have a fabulous holiday, and uh, hope that you can join us uh, Christmas and the afternoon on Mondays, on next Monday uh, for a live uh, show too. Bye, everyone.